Michael, what are we doing in this well? I have no clue, but our recording equipment is down here with us. That's weird. Well, well, well. Look who's found themselves at the bottom of my private well. So do either of you have anything to say for yourselves before we leave you at the bottom of Matt's private well for an eternity? It rubs the lotion on the skin or else it gets the hose again. Travis, this is that is not that that is not the right movie. I'm sorry. That, that that's not we're that, not we're not going there. That's not the movie we're reviewing this week? No, no, no. This that no. And and given our and given our situation, that is not appropriate. Ah, okay. Uh, did you catch that? I, I couldn't hear him. Nah, I wasn't paying attention. Anyways, I guess you guys didn't expect us to lure you into a giant catapult with a bowl of Mima's old-fashioned styled cheese grits, which are famously Michael's favorite food, and then to launch you straight to the bottom of Matt's private well. Now before you start complaining, I'd just like to point out that this is getting off pretty easy when you take into account all the awful things you've done to Gratton and I. I mean, just the other day you threw a brick through my window with some of the most offensive, hateful things I've ever read written on it. I see you clawing at the bricks down there, Michael, and it's no use. Dag nabbit, Travis, I told you, I told you that throwing a brick through their window was a bad idea. Yeah, but but you're the one who wrote something about Grattan's mom and Clifford that I do not want to repeat. I would not have done that if he had not have said such horrible, horrible things about Godzilla vs. Kong. And by the way, how dare you? How dare you use uh, Mima's famous grits against me? Now, Grattan, let us out of here now. The only chance you have of getting out of there is cutting together a, a large amount of your funniest clips from your podcast and putting it together as some kind of end-of-year podcast special. But I honestly don't see that happening anytime soon. Yeah, that chance of that... So Matt and I are going to go to the glass store to get some new glass to replace the windows that you broke. And when we come back, you better still be here. Can we get ice cream on the way back? Yes, we can get ice cream on the way back. Cool. Can I have some ice cream too? I, I, I think they've already gone. Anyone? I, but I, I wanted some ice cream. If we're going to be stuck down here compiling a best of episode, we at least deserve some ice cream. Listen, Michael. The faster we get through the best of episode, the quicker we can get out of this well. Fine, but I really want some ice cream. Preferably Rocky Road. If you guys can still hear me, I would like some Rocky Road ice cream. And some Andy's mints. Just, just roll the clips. This episode of Kaiju Weekly is brought to you by the sound Godzilla makes right after he destroys Tokyo. Like that? No, not not even close. This week's episode of Kaiju Weekly is brought to you by Barabee Gone Pest Control. Are you struggling to get rid of pests in your local prefecture? Have you tried grenades but to no avail? Then call Barabee Gone. With our patented subterranean distribution method, we promise to run off every nuisance from top to bottom, ensuring that you'll never see a giant octopus. Give us a call to prevent a gargantuan war from invading your space today. This week's episode of Kaiju Weekly is brought to you by your new best friend, Dwayne the Pet Rock Johnson. Can you smell what this friendship is cooking? How about hours and hours of real rock wrestling fun? Make your rocks stand out with removable eyebrows. Be the envy of your old friends as you carry around your new pal in a stylish fanny pack adorned with the face of your rock's namesake. Find out why it's the people's choice and get your very own Dwayne the Pet Rock Johnson today. 
Hey all you cool cats and kaijus, are you looking for the hottest beachfront karaoke club this side of the Pacific? Look no further than King Caesar's Kaiju Karaoke Joint. It's where all the hippest monsters go to boogie all night and the karaoke machine plays only one song. Come grab a drink and get down with the slickest beasts around at King Caesar's Kaiju Karaoke Joint. And for all you foxy mama gons out there, Wednesday nights are ladies' nights, which means no cover charge for all you funky mothers and violante ladies out there. King Caesar's Kaiju Karaoke Joint, the hottest spot this side of the Pacific. This week's episode of Kaiju Weekly is brought to you by The Ocean. It's scary down there. There, there was a lot of. I don't want to touch on the the dialogue yet. There was a lot. There was a name. Yes, I wrote this. This might have to teeter back into the like section a little bit. Uh-huh. I think it was the. Um, they were they were talking to people on the radio, and somebody had a handle of Zebra Love seventy nine seventy nine. That has to be an internet handle out there in the world. Because if it's not, that's a shame. Because. I was what like, even is this movie? <laughs> yes. There is a podcast that we mention a lot on this on this podcast uh, that are friends of ours that uh, host a giant monster podcast called the Monsters vs. Men podcast. And mm-hmm. on their podcast, they like to give out awards uh, each episode for the movie that they're reviewing. And one of the awards that they give out is the best piece of dialogue or best dialogue. So I want to do that. We're going to we're going to steal the Monsters vs. Men format for just a second and we're going to give out an award for the best dialogue in this movie. So who are your nominees for oh, best man. dialogue in this movie? I mean Mitch has some winners, let me tell you because the first one, I literally rewound this film. <laughs> Because it was like, did he just say that? Did I just, did I mishear what he just said? But they're in the plane, and I think this is after he'd already initially seen it, but they were in a plane with another guy. And he wanted to check on the weather. And he goes, mm-hmm. hey, what's the poop on the weather? And I was like, poop? <laughs> did, you, did you mean scoop? <laughs> but no, he said poop. What's the poop on the weather? And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> there is a scene where they are in washington and they are talking to some generals uh mm-hmm. about the whole giant bird thing and the on the radio there are a couple of pilots who are out flying and come across the giant bird and so you hear the pilots talking through the radio and one of the pilots says and i quote i've seen some mighty big chicken hawks back on the farm but this baby takes the cake. <laughs> wow. <laughs> to which, to which the other pilot says, I am never calling my mother-in-law an old crow ever again. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> oh my God. I must have blacked I... out at that moment because I don't remember those. After watching a movie starring Kristen Stewart, do we think she succeeded or do we think she blew it? And then Michael. <laughs> and then, well, okay. So then, of course, mine was uh, when we are joined by two monstrous men, will they frown or will they grin? When we see Kristen go underwater, will she survive or become kaiju fodder? Uh, Which you wrote as fatter. Yes, you wrote fatter. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah. <Uh-oh. and> I- <laughs> That's okay. Your Godzukis are smaller, so it's like it, it's the same. It's the same number of Godzukis by volume. Yeah, it's it's how you use your Godzuki. Yeah, you guys haven't followed me yet. Uh, I didn't uh, know you were following me. Oh my goodness! I am. I am. Oh, oh man. Uh, no, it's all right. <laughs> um, so yeah, I purposely did it. No, I just. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that Travis guy followed me. No, yeah, the one that made me watch D Wars. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> Gave D Wars five stars. I'm not following them. <laughs> Let's see. I made I made Eric watch D Wars for Kaiju Quarantine, and I made Alex watch uh, Yeti 
Oh, so, so oh I'm surprised gosh. you guys were even willing to be on this podcast. <laughs> we had a, we had a long talk about it, and we decided it was the nice thing to do. So, that's right. oh man. <laughs> All right, while Michael's not here, listeners, I'm going to uh, tell you that I'm going to include his whistling the gamera theme in the episode somewhere, but don't tell him. I want to see if he notices. Shh. Okay. What? I didn't say nothing. I didn't have a secret conversation with the listeners that you wouldn't know about. That guess the bad review. Yeah, guess the bad review. We need so, a theme song. We need a theme yeah. song for this. Maybe like... um. Oh God! Like the circ, like the circus theme, like yeah, something like that. Just something, yeah, just something lighthearted. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. No, 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 this week's episode of Kaiju Weekly is brought to thee by the Holy Hand Grenade. When thou must blow thine enemies to tiny bits, in God's mercy, especially when the giant killer rabbits accept no substitutes. Simply pull the holy pin, count to three, and lob it at thy foes. One, two, five. I mean three. Ah, crap. Wee! I'm Lil Elmo, and I'm here to tell y'all all about my bona fide giant shrimp gumbo. What's a gumbo, I hear you ask? Well, my friends, it's only the cornerstone of Cajun cooking. It's a thick seafood stew filled with okra, sausage, and pretty much any critter you can lay your hands on. If it flies, swims, or crawls, it can go in the gumbo pot. This right here is my special recipe, made with only the finest giant shrimp this side of Infant Island. It's boiled with only the best Cajun spices to kick it up a notch. Bam! So come on down to my restaurant and try a bowl. And like they say down in New Orleans, Laissez les bon temps rouler. Let the good times roll is a pastiche in the same way in the same sense that my bowel movements are a pastiche of everything I've eaten early in the day. <laughs> For anyone who's never listened to the podcast before, we usually score the movies that we watch out of five Godzukis because we like to pay homage to the great Godzuki and embrace the silly side of these giant monster movies by using him as our yardstick to measure these uh, things. But since Godzuki is such a main part of the thing that we're reviewing this week, I decided to switch it up instead of giving it out of five Godzukis. Let's give it out of five Greek women who Voltron into <laughs> one big giant woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, out, of, out of five Greek uh, sirens who Voltron into one giant <laughs> siren, how many of them do you give the first season of Hanna Barbera Godzilla? I am Optimus Prime, and you're listening to Kaiju Weekly, featuring Travis and Michael with special guest Ben Magnet of the Fake Nerd Podcast. Autobots, transform and roll out! Ladies and gentlemen of the Kaiju Weekly Podcast, this is your Michael 2.0 speaking. Here you can hear the exotic Travis blowing his nose. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, okay, so I'm going to go with 350 feet. 360. Not too big to make it awkward, but big enough to get the job done. Man, you're just, you're making it so hard. Um, That's what she said. God. I stepped into that. Uh, Okay, what's the 400 one? Hashtag Yeti nipples, hashtag butt rockets. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, Elijah. <laughs> Thank you for always keeping that a thing on our podcast. <laughs> for a movie that we have never reviewed on the podcast in the entire one year, why does this keep coming? <laughs> 
Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know because we we've talked about we've talked about this. We talked about that people we we've talked about that great podcasts that have reviewed this movie actually reviewed it, like Gargantu Cast, like Tokyo Lives. I don't know if Kaiju Transmissions has done it yet, but if they did, they would probably do a better job than we would. But for some yeah. reason, we have been attached to this movie. Now I know where it comes from. It comes from uh, our experience with Kaiju Quarantine and my my undying enthusiasm for the movie. <laughs> for some ungodly reason, it has attached itself to us like a I don't know, like a like a, like a like a tick, like a little tick that just keeps <laughs> gnawing at us. Uh, and every now and then that little tick will rear its ugly little head and say, Yeti nipper. And then it'll just recede back into the ether uh, from whence it came. We have described that movie as a 1970s porno, but without the sex. Um, and I think that that is a fitting description for that movie. Yeti nipples. Eric, I have opinions about Kaiju with rockets that shoot out of their butts. Invite me on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're going to have an explicit tag on this one. <laughs> and his name is John Cena. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. <laughs> no, I know that's that's good enough. Because we talk about suspension of belief. Now, now this is the line, the, the line that Michael drew in in the sand, like he always does. He always draws these lines. Lord Gatekeeper. <laughs> Lord Gatekeeper. Anyway, go ahead. Um, that there's a suspension of belief. And I think that Jurassic Park falls into that category because you do have to suspend some belief that they that scientists were able to recreate these giant you know dinosaurs but, but it's it, not out of but it's not out of the realm of possibility now because we well do. it's not out of the realm of possibility that king kong exists on an <laughs> island somewhere like we had giant apes in history yeah but not the size of kong though kong wasn't that big in the original king kong he's bigger in like kong skull island and well, stuff you're gonna, as i say you're gonna have to be more specific on which kong you're talking about kong is still a giant monster i still think that i still think that you're this you're so still suspending your belief in a sci-fi just because there's an explanation of the sci-fi doesn't mean you have to suspend your belief that the sci-fi i mean we're talking about power rangers in this episode and they explain that these are these are alien powers that come from this you know other planet or whatever just because there's an explanation for it does not make it less of a sci-fi thing Yes, but that's technology that doesn't currently exist right now, though. Like well, gene, we don't gene, have no, no, the technology no, 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 to recreate no, no, no. dinosaurs either. Yes, we do. No, yes, we, we do. don't. Yes, no, we, we do. don't. Oh my we god! Not, yes, we do. We do not have the technology to create the dinosaurs that are in Jurassic Park. We, we have, have the technology. We have the technology. We will build them. No, no, we do not. Have because we, we are the, building the, the million dollar dinosaur, Travis. The 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 science that's in Jurassic Park is not even real. Like using frog DNA to fill in the gaps, the genetic gaps in it is not how you would yes, do that. You could not do but, that. But they have attempted it with some degree of success, though. No, you cannot do that. Is not how genetics works. You cannot use frog DNA to fill in the gaps of a dinosaur. Dinosaur DNA is not the same. Plus, drawing DNA from a mosquito that's been locked away for millions of years is not going to work. There is a suspension of belief. How is that any more of a suspension of belief than a dinosaur that exists underwater being mutated by atomic radiation, which is what Godzilla is. Because it's a little bit more fantastical. When it no, gets it, to, it's when no it gets, more fantastical. When it gets to the degree of that kind of fantast, when it fan, fantasy, I don't know what word I'm looking for. When it gets to that level of fantasticalness, yeah, I, I made up a word there. Um, 
I think it's a little bit different than something like Jurassic Park that it is about dinosaurs. We know dinosaurs existed. We know like, yes, you have to suspend your belief that they are regenerated through genetics and technology. Yes, there is a there is a degree of suspension of belief there, but it's a little bit more grounded than, say, Godzilla. Godzilla is not very is not a very grounded character. Like, I don't think that the nuclear radiation is going to magically transform an iguana into a giant radioactive. No, that's the thing. In the original Gojira, he is a dinosaur. And he looks the way he looks just as a dinosaur. And then he was then he was hit with radiation. So now he has radiation, you know, and has the atomic breath and has the radiation scarring. So he is still just a dinosaur. And then they use the oxygen destroyer. But even things like so then you're saying if you're drawing the line with the dinosaurs, and I'm sorry, Kim, you're caught in the middle of all this. <laughs> but if you're she's, she's just like okay. she's just she, she's sitting here enjoying herself. <laughs> but if you're drawing the line for Di- the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, then you're also drawing the line for Biollante because Biollante is the exact same genetic engineering to create Biollante that created the dinosaurs. Yes, but oh, come on. So, okay. so you're saying that Biollante is not a giant monster. No, Biollante is a giant monster. But they explain how she's created and she's created using the exact same genetic DNA manipulation that they use. But in dinosaurs Jurassic Park. actually existed. Like a giant rose monster is not that has never and probably will never exist. That is the but that's the, the dinosaurs that existed in Jurassic Park are not the dinosaurs that existed in real life. They're different. But they're close enough. No, they're they're close, not. En- close enough as to what we had in what we had in the in the fossil record and the sciences at that time. No, 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 no. They are completely different. There's no feathers. There's no quills. There's no anything like that that we know. At the, t- at the time of that movie was made, we didn't know that a lot of these predators had feathers. Travis, come on. We didn't. We and and the fact that the like. Uh, um, what what's uh t-rex uh, only is based on movement and everything like all of that is made up oh that's bull. that's bull that's bunk uh that that is bunk because we know that t-rex actually had a fantastic eyesight right it's fantastical it's fantastical the movie is fantastical that's just how it is it's it's a fantasy mo- it's a sci-fi fantasy movie where they create monsters that look like dinosaurs and they bring them into the real world like okay. that is that's that's a monster movie. What makes that any different than any other monster movie? What makes that different than Rodan when Rodan is just supposed to be a pteranodon that is woken up from being asleep underground? There's not even any kind of mutation or genetic you know manipulation. He is j- just a pteranodon. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna get mad if I I'm I'm not gonna get mad I'm not gonna get mad because I don't want to argue in front of the listener because we've drugged this on long enough. Uh, uh, all right, uh, Kim, <laughs> Kim, uh, do you have Hi. any other? I'm, I'm still Hi. here. Yeah, Kim, Kim is still here. <laughs> Hello, Kim. Hi, uh, how's it going? Hello, everybody. How are you today? Oh, that is awful. That is awful. No, never again. Never. I'm gonna, no, I'm going to do the whole episode in this voice. How does this sound, everybody? Diva talks boobies. <laughs> <laughs> As written in the in the book of Turbo, Diva talks is boobs. I don't know. I don't even know where to go with that. <laughs> Down. Ye shall love the D cup. <laughs> oh, God. For some reason, and I don't know if it's just me, but for some reason, the wizard's wife looks and reminds me of Topanga from Boy Meets World. <gasps> and oh, I no. don't know why. <laughs> Clifford is a kaiju. Oh, come, come on, Travis. Goes. That's how it goes. No, <laughs> it's not. We have guests. I'm not. No, no. We're, we have guests. <laughs> we okay, have so guests. <laughs> we have guests. <laughs> we're not fighting in front of the guests. We haven't had this conversation before. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And then at the very last minute, a bunch of a bunch of alt accounts of, of Michael's came in and and spammed the vote. <laughs> and really, and pushed, Lord, really, <laughs> look, I <laughs> really? saw the, I saw you use the Kaiju Ramen official magazine's Twitter account to vote Lord Zed. I don't, you yes, don't but you snuck that by me. <laughs> You, uh, you used the magazine's uh, Twitter account to vote for your own. That was season three. Yeah. Look, see, uh, Michael likes to make up stuff because he knows no. I'm not as diverse <laughs> no. in Power Rangers oh, as he is. And so he likes to make stuff up and, and, and spout it out as fast. JR, JR, come on. You know what I'm talking about. Michael, we already had this argument. We're not going to get into it now. We had it last week. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm not going to apologize to you. What? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I will apologize to you when you admit that Clifford is a kaiju. There's hope for the world. For the world. For the world. <laughs> for the world. <laughs> hope for the world. Hey there, audio listener. Michael here. While we're waiting on Travis to get adjusted, did you know that? His favorite food is cheese. Yes, believe it or not, Travis's favorite food is cheese, especially Gouda cheese, that smoky concoction that just makes your heart smile. Goudazilla. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> I keep I keep little notes uh, and stuff so that if like I'm in uh, you know laying in bed, uh, I get an idea for the podcast or something you know podcast related. I'll just put it in my phone, and I have a note in my phone that was from uh, a couple of days ago that says Jet Jaguar, Megalon's butt. <laughs> 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 And it took me, it took me a second to remember what that was about, and I remembered what it was. Do so, we? Well, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, you said you were, <laughs> hang on. You said you were laying in bed when you got this episode, or you got this idea, or whatever it was. So, do Travis? Do we really want to know what you were thinking about before <laughs> before you tell us? Well, this this will this gives everyone a glimpse into how my mind works. So ah, I'm laying okay. in bed, and I'm thinking. So Jet Jaguar has the power to grow gigantic. You know, he he starts off the size of a human, and becomes the size of Godzilla. So all he had to do to defeat Megalon was just fly up Megalon's butt and grow gigantic. Boom. And oh, I gotta okay. just I got I got to read this to you. This is <laughs> this is the most fascinating thing I have ever read. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's their review that they put on public on Letterboxd. Okay. I had a bad day. My coffee was bad, work was loud and gross, and I'm mad at myself because I allowed myself to fall behind on my workout routine by nearly three months, effectively hitting the reset button, and now my butt is all, all but deflated. <clears throat> I did not want to watch this movie, especially after a crap day with dysphoria hitting me hard. <laughs> Why do this to myself? Why not put on something I haven't seen before or for fantastic Mr. Fox? That always makes me happy. But I did it anyway. And you know what? I'm glad I did. Because if I can force myself to sit through this disrespectful pile with an American actor and wisecracking dickhead military grunts inserted in, all of the important parts chopped up or excised completely and re-edited to move so fast you're wondering how Godzilla ended up in a volcano by the end, I can certainly force myself to work out every other day so I can have a fat butt. <laughs> um, I have a new way of introducing the podcast this week. Instead of doing our normal intro, I want to try something different. Okay, let's go for it. Okay. Ooh, Kaiju Weekly, listen if you please. Ooh, 
Kaiju Weekly. We watch monster movies. What the <laughs> hell was that? Blank appears to... It's a half-star review as well. Blank appears to avoid all political consideration because it's a quote-unquote wholesome, apolitical, animated family movie. But... What lies beneath is a neoliberal propaganda film meant to tell us what the government authorities who harass us at home, at our work, and our local restaurants do indeed know what they are doing at the end of the day and will save us all through their recording and tracking of everything we do. I'm not saying that this is November 22, I'm sorry, I'm not saying that this is November 2001 film. Well, this November 2001 film was coordinated with 9-11 attacks to further <laughs> <laughs> to further instill a cultural uh, comfort in Zionist and government surveillance. The same <laughs> government surveillance which followed the Patriot Act and the Homeland Security Act enabling contracts between the government and private online information businesses to monitor us and our data. I'm not. I think these I think the these actions of supreme government overwatch with the ad, uh, advancement of the internet where insatiable under capitalist ideology within the mass action against <laughs> against it, the US government utilized the 9/11 attacks to install these monitoring policies quicker and with greater force than it would have otherwise what freaking movie is this no. guy talking about <laughs> okay so no, that's no, actually funny november 2001 giant monster uh, giant monster movie narrows it down <laughs> to two entries <laughs> <laughs> giant uh <laughs> godzilla mothra king Ghidorah, giant monsters all out attack uh-huh or monsters inc Mm. <laughs> Both have been confirmed by the Pope as Godzilla movies. Right. And by extension, giant monster movies. <laughs> exactly. But the term I... animated. Oh, makes you gave me... it away. Yeah. What really gives it away is the fact that I wrote this review, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, I've been mobbed by a bunch of hummingbirds today. <laughs> <laughs> Can you sing the Muppet Babies theme from memory? Uh, Muppet Babies. Da, 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 da. No, that's, that's Grease. Wait, <laughs> hang on. I'm getting that song. I'm getting that song confused with the theme from Grease. Muppet Babies. Um, see, see, okay. The song that always comes to, always to mind, mind when I try to sing the Muppet Babies theme song is uh, Santa Baby. <laughs> Muppet babies <laughs> are really been an awful wait no <laughs> oh no this, is, this this got age inappropriate real quick <laughs> yes it did uh that's just a little side note uh <laughs> no one knows what the Muppet babies theme song is <laughs> it's always confused with another I know like if I heard the Muppet Baby, if I heard the Muppet Babies theme song, uh, I would know it. It's like it's like um, uh, Muppet uh, Babies. Uh, Ooh. Uh, Muppet Baby. No, get on it. Um, <laughs> um, shoot, what is it? What is? Hang on, give me a second. I know Muppet the Muppet Babies, Babies theme song. Running here and there and everywhere. High adventures is beyond compare. They are the Muppet Babies. I don't babies. think that's it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that is. Is it, uh, um, is it hang out with the Muppet Babies? Wait, no. Hang on. That's Fraggle Rock. Uh, <laughs> Menomina. Heck do, on do, it. Do, do. Muppet do, Babies. Do, 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 the Muppet do, do, Babies. Do, do, do. Babies. Do, do. The Muppet Babies. Ba -do 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 do 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 Boom. <laughs> this is what we should have filled the first 15 minutes with. <laughs> Trying to figure out the, the darn Muppet Babies theme song. I'm telling song. you, yeah. it's impossible. No one knows what the Muppet Babies theme song is. That was my point. That's why well, I wanted to bring it up. If someone, if, 
if someone on Twitter, without looking it up, if you looked it up, you're cheating. Of course, there's really no way for us to confirm that you cheated. But if you can sing to us the Muppet Babies theme song from memory, please do it. Because now, now I have to go. After, now after this podcast, I'm going to have to look it up. I feel like there's some kind of secret code inside the Muppet Babies theme song that if someone sings it, it like opens up like a portal somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> maybe yeah maybe maybe um i mean it would make sense because it's it's the most difficult freaking song to remember <laughs> <laughs> and this has nothing to do with what we're talking about or anything that it's was like, said in like, our trivia questions <laughs> it's like do 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 no that's do, doug that's doug hang on <laughs> Oh, back on it. <laughs> ah, you Muppet Babies! <laughs> Muppet Babies! I was like, wait, no. What's the cat dog theme? I'm trying to remember the cat dog I theme. have no idea. Uh, I, I did not watch cat dog enough to remember. It's the eye of a tiger. It's the thrill of the... Oh, maybe that's the, the Muppet Babies theme song. It's the... Muppet no. Babies, it's the thrill of the fight. <laughs> no, no, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that. It's like, um, it'd be, I, I really, maybe it's, um, maybe it's, do you believe in the Muppet Babies? babies. No. Go, go, Muppet Babies. Do, 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 do. Now, we finally do, found do, it. Do, do, do. We finally found it. Go, yes. go, Muppet Babies. No, that's not, that's still not that's, it. No, that's a that's it. That's it. And the plot breakdown is, and I swear, if you read the plot breakdown to Muppet Babies, I will lose my, <laughs> I will lose my stuff. I'm so excited to talk about Common Rider with you, Daddy. <laughs> that probably won't make it into the show. <laughs> that needs to be the that cold out. open. <laughs> <laughs> make that the cold open. Make that the cold open. <laughs> and uh, Daisy, if you bite me, I'm going to bite you back. That might be the cold open. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I'm gonna drop. Oh. <clears throat> so, um, <laughs> poor. Poor. Poor Daisy. Poor Daisy. Not poor Daisy. Poor me. She's the one who keeps trying to bite me. <laughs> I think I hate this movie. Wow, that is a bold state. That's a bold statement, Cotton. Uh, uh, okay, no, I, I, I think I hate this movie. So, so I hated it when I first started watching it. Then it got kind of fun, mm -hmm. kind of towards the middle, and then I got to the mm -hmm. end and I realized, no, I think I hate this movie. So I, I so we usually okay. do a a a positivity sandwich on all of our on all of our reviews. We usually start with the positives, then we do some negatives, and then we finish on some positives. I think this time around we need to do a negativity sandwich where we where we get get all the negatives, uh, then maybe talk about some of the positives, and then finish on. I mean, some there are it. positives. There is a cat with a chef's hat on. There, there is positives. a okay, the chef cat, yes. Okay, we we can do our normal positivity <laughs> sandwich because let's talk about the chef cat. The chef <laughs> cat is the one thing in this movie that makes me like enough of the oh, positives. I mean, okay, oh, enough I mean, enough of just praising oh. this film. Let's get into some negative. <laughs> Who hurts you, Travis? <laughs> this movie hurt me. <laughs> so, okay. 
This movie <laughs> did the thing that has been happening in a lot of action movies for a while now, and I am so sick and tired of seeing it. It is one of the just most annoying things that an action movie can do, and that is when an action scene uh -huh. hits, it suddenly starts going into the where it's it goes black and then cuts back real quick, and you see a few a few like frames, and then it cuts to black, then cuts back, and then it cuts black. That stuff is so annoying i'm sick and tired of right. seeing that in movies it is like it's like it's like the action scene equivalent of the boah from uh from inception it was fine the one time that it got used every other time it mm -hmm. has been annoying stop doing it mm -hmm. and this scene is this type of scene is the same thing i am so sick and tired of seeing this stop doing it you you know what scene i'm talking tell us about how you tell us how you really feel when i'm watching this movie i can't tell is that a bad decision or is that going to pay off at the end oh no it doesn't pay off spoiler alert to anybody who hasn't seen this movie nothing pays off at the end there's no payoff in this movie at all for anything right i'm getting a headache <laughs> <laughs> No, no, you cannot make fun of dumb action movies when you are a dumb action movie. <laughs> Is it fair to say that Monster Hunter has a little bit of an identity crisis? I don't think it has an identity crisis. I think it's just a bad movie. It has, it knows, it, it has an identity. The identity is bad. It's just bad. <laughs> At the end of this movie, I don't care about spoiling this movie. It's a bad movie. Don't watch it, people. Don't watch it. Be spoiled. Be have this movie ruined for you and never watch it. Um, <laughs> turn it into a drinking game. Turn it in. Just watch it. If you're gonna watch it, turn it into a drinking game. I don't know what you could do with it, but you could turn it into a drinking game. I don't know. But they go to this tower where the which is the center of the storm, the center of everything that's creating portals. And there's lightning, it's dark, it's raining, everything's kind of, everything's just intense. And, and there's the, the fire breathing dragon and everything looks ancient because it's like an ancient uh, temple type, you know, or monument or whatever. And it was built by a, an ancient civilization. It was such a, it's such an, a really, really cool set piece. And mm -hmm. two minutes into it, they teleport back to the real world and it's just a desert again. That yep. that's where I started hating the movie again. That's where, that's where I realized like, no, no, I actually do hate this movie. If, if this movie gets a sequel and I, I know they were setting up for a sequel. Cause there's a, there's a post credit scene that sets up for a sequel. If there is a sequel to this movie, just kill me now. Cause I, I do not want to have to go through this again. Godzilla versus the clickbait monster. Hey. Where Really quick, sorry. I need to pause. Just I need to pause just for a hot minute. And the reason being, uh, FedEx a apparently delivered my food outside, and I want to get it because it's still warm out. So hang on. Oh, okay, okay. You had food FedExed. That's weird. Oh, this is so unprofessional. This is exactly like Michael. Just so unprofessional. <laughs> uh, I keep thinking about getting another co-host, but then you know, having to go through and interview everybody, and trying to you know see and work up this new new relationship that we have and everything. It's just uh, it's so much work, so much work, and I'm tired. I'm always tired. Daisy, while we're on this break, do you wanna you wanna say something to the listeners? Daisy says the microphone smells good. And that's why she likes to rub her face all over it. <sighs> so anyway, how are you listeners? You doing good? This is why our five star rating is dropping. Stuff like this. We're down to a 3.5 star. Because of this. Because of Michael and having his food FedExed to him. Who has food FedExed? What in the world?
What do you mean FedExing food? Did he die in the process? It'd be really awful if somebody kidnapped Michael right now, held him for ransom, and I'm just sitting here on this recording, talking to myself and the kitty cat. False alarm? False alarm? What do you mean false alarm? Just, just, I'm just, I really, really am picturing, I'm picturing everything that happens in Passion of the Christ, but just some big old, like, dog, some kind of dog, uh, like a Rottweiler, one of those real massive dogs in place of Jesus. <laughs> just, I don't know. I just uh, hear the howling. Oh, <laughs> oh, so when they, it comes I'm time. When it when no it comes, one has when ever comes time like for, him when, before. <laughs> no one, when it no comes one time for the cr- like this to us before. <laughs> so 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 they make the dog in that movie fetch its own cross. It <laughs> fetch oh. its own cross. <laughs> and Judas is scary as a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's awful. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> oh, he, oh. He, he licks the face of the blind man and it heals him. Oh, God, I don't oh, know why. So we uh, we okay. might want to, we might want to steer away from the red. We might, we want to, we want to, we want to get away from the blasphemy. Okay. Let's, let's yeah, stop blaspheming. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's just, Oh, he was he was tempted. He was tempted with the bacon bits, uh, or, or, or the, the in, in the in the desert. Oh, sweet! Dog Turn Jesus. these stones into into. <laughs> oh my goodness! Into milk bones. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm just like I'm obsessed Let these- with. Let let these milk bones get up and live. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Take, take your dog. Take up your dog bed and walk. That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, take up your dog bed. <laughs> <laughs> they had to. <laughs> 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 Oh, uh, let let God, he who is with, Jesus just me. let he who is without <coughs> sin cast the first tennis ball. <laughs> Some women who live in a van hang out with a young boy, but when I do it, it's suddenly a crime. That's the first review. <laughs> Se- <laughs> so- it's terrible. <laughs> Too horny. Do not watch. What? In all, in all caps. <laughs> so, so which camera movie is too horny and would irritate a cat? <laughs> that was one of the funniest moments from Kaiju Quarantine was when somebody oh. mentioned that and Elijah had no idea what we were talking about. And so he had to go and look it up. <laughs> well, they obviously they obviously don't teach that in preschool. Uh, no, no, they don't teach that in preschool. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a parent and you're listening to this podcast in the car with your children, I am sorry. And just if they ask you what those words mean, just say that they're the names of food. I need fan art of a banana of a kaiju banana with gas nipples. Go for it. <laughs> You're the one that always yells at me for not letting, don't in, encourage the weird fan art. And now you're the one who's doing it. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I want to see a kaiju banana with gas nipples. <laughs> is, is that what the minions are talking about when they sing about bananas? <laughs> Ba 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 na na ba 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 na na 
Y ahí va. Oh, excuse me. Oh, <laughs> I think I killed Michael. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be able to continue. <laughs> I don't, what kind of dreams are we having that our dream is to go see a bucket of goo? Uh, that, that's my dream. <laughs> I can't, listen, <laughs> I have a dream. Oh, God. <laughs> that one day I will get to see the big bucket of goo. Oh, boy. Zigoo. I must see Zigoo. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, my favorite <laughs> discovery recently was when I was having a conversation with you, Elijah, and we were talking about movies and TV shows by this one creator, and we found out that there is a uh, a ah. Japanese show called Neko Ramen, which means cat ramen or cat soup, which is translated. Pussy soup. Yes, which is translated into English as pussy soup. Uh, so wait, hang that... on. Do we do we wait? Hang on. Do we need to bleep that out because it's a kitty cat? I I know, but it's a kitty cat. My pussy's okay. up here on the desk with me right now. <laughs> 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 anyway, well, um, my pussy you... ran away like you're saying. <laughs> oh, so sad. Oh, <laughs> the raw, uncut, filtered, naked version of Kaiju Weekly, which includes See, breasts. Which include, yeah, which is, yeah. <laughs> but you know what doesn't include breasts? Something Actually, I don't I like. I don't I can, like that yeah. transition. I don't like that transition, Michael. Michael, do a different transition. Transition it differently, Michael. You know, maybe you and and Elijah can make that Yeti themed no, no, uh, no, movie no, that you not, guys have been working on. We're not on. including Elijah, underage, sixteen year old oh, Elijah man. is not well, getting included in Dep anything. Okay, uh, thank you, everyone. <laughs> Help control the giant monster population. Have your Dorats spayed or neutered. Help control the Pepe population. <laughs> Have your Ymirs spayed or neutered. Pepe, uh, what are you doing? The hat is too tight. It kill your brain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that we've replaced the window that Michael broke at my house, and we've also gotten ice cream on the way back, let's check on how our well prisoners are doing. So, how's the weather? D uh, yeah, they got out. Well, we got them down there. That's what counts. Yeah, live and let live. Hurry up, Travis. We gotta get out of here before they get back. Well, we'd be moving faster if you didn't have to stop and get ice cream out of their fridge before we left. If they weren't so stupid, they would have figured out they had ice cream in the freezer this whole time. Can you at least help me carry this recording equipment? We still have to record all of next year's episodes of Kaiju Weekly. You're doing such a fine job, Travis. Besides, what am I going to do? I've, got, I've only got two hands, one for the bowl, one for the spoon. 